Hello, hello, and welcome back to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Last time, we attended a wonderful little wedding. And you know, with how much work we've put into this kingdom, how much we've tried to help everybody, it's really hitting that point where there's just one more big thing we have to do, and that's to take down Ganon. But before we do that, we still have yet to hit our full potential. And to do that, we're going to need to find the remaining shrines. And I'm now going to start breaking the minimum map usage rule. Because at this point, we only have 14 shrines left, I believe. And to try and find those on my own would take so long. So long that it would stretch this series out uh, to an unreasonable amount of time, and you know, I don't think you guys want to see me spend fucking forever on this. And because of that, I now have open on the side the Zelda Dungeon Interactive Breath of the Wild map, and at the end of last stream, I actually went and removed all of the shrines I've already visited, so that all that is on my interactive map I have on the side is the 14 shrines I have yet to do. And we're now going to basically just move towards all of those and maybe finish a few quests on the side as we go, uh, if we happen to be in the area for them. Um, oh, which actually, speaking of which, it looks like we're going to have one. Yeah, the first area I'm going to want to go is down into this area for a couple of shrines. So we're now going to start doing this. And then we're going to want to head down this way. And then we got a shrine over here. A shrine... ...around here somewhere? Hang on, it's a little harder to make out the spots in the desert. Yeah, this spot, like, at this point I'm using a, a sort of guide. Just because, like I said, it would be... It would be too dull for me to just run around the map looking for these, but I don't want to not get all of them, you know what I mean? And then we gotta go around this area. And there's more, but that's our first few, uh, points on our map hit marked off of where we're gonna go. Uh, oh wait, what's the name of the, the shop? I haven't- come on, I haven't read the shop name yet. Rodson's Armor Boutique. What's up, Hudson? Hey. It's you. Thank you for attending the ceremony. <laughs> Congratulations, bud. Thank you. And now Terrytown looks like a real town at long last. This was all possible because of you. I can't thank you enough for the, all the hard work you did. Alright. This is for you. Oh, thank you! These were found inside the boulders we smashed when we were clearing the land. Rotz and I have no use for them. You can take them. Wow, man. Hey there. Vazak, did you need something? Savak. Yes, Savak, that is correct. <laughs> the wedding ceremony wasn't what I expected, but it was special all the same. Did you like the dress? I made it myself. No kidding. Although Hudson wanted me to weave the the gem the the gems he mined into it, so every step down down the aisle is a struggle. <laughs> well, that's life for you, with all its twists and turns. I hope you stick with us through them. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, getting stuck on the environment. Oh, look at. They actually have the symbols on these little, uh, platforms, too. Oh, that's weird. The dirt clips through differently depending on the camera angle. Because the dirt's loading and deloading. That's weird. I like that. They all have the different things that are marked up. Hey! I was just standing around when the wedding started out of nowhere and took me by surprise! I've known Hudson for ages, and he never said, said a word about it. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, it's a nice wedding ceremony, so I guess all's well to ends well. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. The bride and groom were so lovely, weren't they? Indeed. Mm -hmm. Love, such a sublime, precious thing, you know? 
My best wishes to the couple. Now that the wedding's over, we should probably head back to Hateno Village. No, no, don't go to my house. Well then. Carson, we're going home. Okay. No, not my house. Leave my house be. Well. I guess they're back there. Hey there, man. Hey! Oh, hey, what can I get you? Hey. Hello. So glad the wedding went well. Rutson looked stunning. Uh, I hope I'd be able to. I hope I'll be able to find a bride as pretty as her someday. <laughs> well, I should get back to the shop. Responsibility and all that. Can Ritos and human or Gerudo, I guess, even breed with each other? Because I assume Rito got a cloaca situation going on. So I feel like men can impregnate female Rito, but I don't know if a male Rito can impregnate a human woman without the use of tools. Link, are you in need of a good sleep? Nah, I'm good. May the kindness of Goddess Hylia ever be with you. You know, I almost wish that the homes had a few decorations pertaining to the... the homeland of the people who lived in them. That would have been a nice detail. Like, the Zora one has a few Zora decorations, the Gerudos has a few Gerudo decorations. But anyway... Uh, I noticed... Is this a new per another new person who moved into town? Yes! You know, the town's really grown. <sighs> Wait, what's going on? What's going on up there, huh, buddy? <laughs> what's the deal? I'm a traveler. I normally don't have time to mingle with commoners, but I have a feeling about you. I'll make an exception this time. Your clothes. I'm guessing you're a little har hard up for cash, am I right? No. Oh. Okay, fuck you too, buddy. Oh, look at those clothes. You must be really need some money. Fuck you, man. Alright, uh, let's actually get on our adventurer's gear. And start setting off in hunt of the different shrines. Oh, very cool outfits. Alright, um, so yeah, like I said, first destination is going to be there, and I believe if we pull out our, uh, how do I even, okay, I use this so rarely that I forgot how to do it. I believe the pins become visible through this thing, I just don't think we can see them because they're all on the other end of the mountains. Alright, let's just, uh, yeah, head off that way and start making our way. Yeah, I've, I've avoided doing any kind of guide stuff for the most part or anything like that, or even using the map too heavily up until now, just because, like, I think it's fun. The, the, the era of mystery of Discovery, I think, is a lot funner, you know what I mean? Of stumbling across the things and bumping into stuff. And so I've been avoiding using the map. I do that a lot in games in general, is I like to avoid using the map if I can. Only pulling it open when I need to reference specific named locations and things like that. Because I think it, it, like I said, it makes the exploration funner. It's also the same reason I don't like doing the teleportation or fast travel in other games. I'd rather just uh, walk through the environment and enjoy the beautiful surroundings that the designer spent so much time crafting, you know? Absorb the environment and the feel of it. This is great. But at this point, we've done all the really big things I want to. You know, we've done all the shrines. We've done all the or all the sorry, not the shrines. We've done all the uh, divine beasts. We've done all the uh, DLCs. We finished the uh, Terrytown quest line, which is. I think up there has one of my favorite quests in all of higher or all of uh, the Zelda series. There's something really satisfying about putting in the work to build up an entire town. I feel like you could make an make entire games built around that premise. That would be amazing, you know, an RPG where you're establishing a town. Actually, in that vein, uh, I've always wanted to get into game design or RPG design. 
And one concept I've always had is a old western steampunk. So it's like, it's about the old western colony times that we had in our world, but it's in a fantastical steampunky world. And a lot of it would be almost designed in a way to comment on elements of our real world. Uh, so like my idea is, is, you know, the people come from the old land or the old kingdom, which is very heavily implied to be analogous to England. And the, the colonists are forming, you know, the new country is what they call it, which is, you know, supposed to be like the Americas. And they have the first, like, they have the eastern cities, which are like the New England vibe, and the wild expanse of the west, also known as the Wild West. And the old kingdom is implied to be incredibly technologically advanced, being akin to like a crazy high fantasy steampunk. And just elements of that have dripped, drip fed their way over to the new society in the form of automatons. And there's two models of automaton in this world that I've come up with. There's the uh, ge the Generation 1 automatons and the Generation 2 automatons. Generation 1 automatons are punch card powered. They are like these kind of dumb, uh, clunky, slow-moving robots. Similar to the robots from Batman Arkham City, if you've ever played that game. You can just look them up, the Wonderbots from Arkham City. And uh, they they are not smart, they have no problem solving skills. What it is is they all have a punch card slot that you slide into their mouth and it makes them do a pre-programmed set of movements and actions. And the game might actually have puzzles where you have to pre- they have to code them. Hang on. This guy, this guy. You. Oh, you're not who I thought you were. Hey, you were there, me? Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. Come on, I'm not some creeper. I just want to talk, my friend. What do you say? All right, what's up? I thought this was a different traveler. There's a rare traveler we've yet to bump into that I want to see. Oh, joy. Thank you. Now then, let me start over. That thing hanging on your hip. That's a Sheikah Slate. You're a Yiga, aren't you? <laughs> see, I knew it. Well, then. <clears throat> Be gone, enemy of my master! I've never seen an actually traveling on foot Yiga clan member. All right, let's uh get this. Shut up, phone. All right, let's. Oh, Jesus. Uh, give me back my ice rod. Ah, fuck me. Yeah, just freeze all of these bitches. And dead. And this is the first time we've seen that uh, we've been able to pick up a wind cleaver, I think. But I don't really care about it. Alright, let's get out of here. I don't even care about the skeletons. I just want to beat up the Zika. But yeah, I was saying with the uh, the setting I have, the the Gen One robot automatons, you just they just follow pre-programmed actions. But the second generation automatons are a massive leap in technology in that they have artificial intelligence and problem-solving skills, allowing them to you know not just follow a pre-given set of commands, but come up with uh, solutions to problems they're presented with. And they basically have human level intelligence and a big part of the morality is of like the question of the setting is like, you know, do you give these or like their robots start developing a desire for rights and to be treated equally. And in this fictional world, they'd be put in a lot of the same situations that the slaves we had during the out, out Wild West had building railroads and working plantations, but they would actively be seeking a better life. Because they, they start to develop human desires, but that's viewed as a glitch in their systems that needs to be fixed and removed. Um, meanwhile, another element of the setting I had in my mind is, you know, the native people, which would, in this, like, fantastical uh, setting, have a dramatically different appearance to the humans. Kind of like how in D&D &D they have elves and orcs and all of that. 
and I've always imagined I, I, they would be called uh, elves, but appearance-wise, they'd have these long, almost rabbit-like, pointed, drooping ears, and um, uh, a vaguely animalistic appearance is the way I've always imagined them looking. And, you know, the colonizers are like, oh, they're subhuman, these creatures. They aren't like you and me. They don't, they, they're savages. But, you know, they're kind of not. And they would have access to magic of the land that other people, that the, the colonists don't. And has like a uh, RPG, if I were to make it a video game, a big part of it would be at the start of the game, you'd get to pick if you want to be an automaton, a native person, or a colonizer. Oh, fucking Yiga, always showing up at the most annoying times. And, you know, it contained a lot of commentary on the, the politics of the Wild West and how genuinely fucked up the Wild West was while also playing a little bit into the the fantasy that's been built around, the revisionist fantasy that's been built around the Wild West, but also pulling the rug out from under that. So you'd have a lot of missions that are like, you know, the classic, oh, go into a town with a bandit problem and help solve the issue and, you know, but there'd be like a lot of different solutions to these different problems. And I think a fun quest line I would want to do in it is one where you meet a group of people who are trying to go out and build a new town in the frontier. And, oh Jesus. Uh, God, this thing goes so fast the game can't fully handle it. I love that. But yeah, no, like, it's, it's a game I would love to design one day, you know? If I ever get into video game design. Oh fuck, it didn't come out fast enough. Oh, shit, shit, Link, Link. He didn't pull out the paraglider fast enough. I think the Blood Moon respawned all the, the goo barricades. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that's one I just never cleared, because the one over here is still clear. No, stop. Link, jump off the... Oh shit, shit, fuck. Link, you're fucking everything. Alright, we're near a shrine. Somewhere in this area. I think it's understandable why I never found these shrines. Oh god, where is it? I'm trying to sense it. I'm trying to douse it out if I can. See, I'm, I'm trying to use that map I have to get just get me in the general area and not necessarily directly look up the exact locations of the shrines. All right, now we've gotten too far from it to detect it. There should be two in this area that we're looking for. Okay, we've lost it again. Somewhere around here. Come on, hang, hang left. Oh, this is a Korok puzzle. Where is its rock? Up there. Let's go ahead and do this Korok puzzle. Even though I don't know if I'm really gonna visit the 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 forest again at any point, but you know, might as well fucking do it. They're fun. The Koroks are cute. It's always good to get a nice little... <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah. Ooh, they really deform to the terrain a little bit, don't they? I love them. They're so goofy looking. Um, Alright, looking for that shrine. It's in this direction. Oh, doing a little loop and watching when the thing grows can, like, signify what direction the shrine is in. Somewhere this way. There it is. 
Oh yeah, that's an easy to miss one. It's real. It's just buried in a pit. I feel like this was one they were ex excavating back in the day. All right. And with that, uh, the trip here actually took 20 minutes. Wow, that's really. We spent 20 minutes on this already. I mean, I guess we walked around Terry. We walked around Terrytown a little bit, and we took a long drive and had a talk. All right. So next time on Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, we're gonna crack this puppy open and see what's inside. Uh, I hope you've all. Uh, been enjoying this episode of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. If you have, the uh, end cards should be appearing in just a moment for you to watch some more videos. I'd also appreciate hitting a like and subscribe and all that stuff. You know, you guys know how YouTube works. Love y'all very, very much, and ta-ta for now.